Today I want to cover an awesome utility that's available for your QNAP. If you're interested in learning more, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. If you haven't already done so, then don't forget to subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of all new content. So what exactly is hybrid now? It's actually a really useful utility that's available through the QNAP's app store. And it really allows you to connect one or more cloud services to your NAS unit so that they are kind of seamlessly integrated. Uh, it becomes really part of your folders, allowing you to directly access, copy, delete information to and from your cloud services. It sort of acts as a cache between your NAS unit and your cloud services. That way you can get the highest level of performance. Meanwhile, you get the flexibility of accessing your cloud service. It works with a lot of different cloud services, um, but it, the cool thing is it actually works with also um, other NAS units as well as even your Unraid server. This gives you a, an additional level of functionality by seeing kind of all your data at once. So we'll go through a couple of different configurations and set up both a cloud connection as well as a local server connection by attaching uh, to my Unraid server. Okay, so to get started, we're going to actually load the Hybrid Mount app. Now, if you don't have this here, it's available through the App Center. You can download it for free and install it. Let's go ahead and click this thing and see what happens. So, what we're looking at here is the initial interface. Now, when you launch yours, you'll probably get some kind of a help wizard that walks you through and kind of tells you a little bit more about the application, uh, which I've already gone through. So this is basically the main interface that you're going to see when you're actually using it. Just to kind of go kind of go over what the breakdown is over on the left you have an overview. You have a mount management which we you'll see as we configure some of these will actually show up here. You have um, transfer resources which actually shows you what's going on in terms of uploading or downloading files. You have a log and you have licenses. So let's talk about licenses real quick. So you do get two licenses and that only applies to cloud services. It doesn't, you don't use a license for at attaching local servers. So you get two for free. And if you want to buy more, you can obviously buy more. There's an option here to purchase more licenses. Um, I, I find two to be more than enough, but if you do need more, you can get them. So let's start by kind of um, walking through how we're going to configure one of these. Um, this little picture down here kind of gives you an overview of what it's, what your total summary is. It shows you how many cloud services you have, how many remote server servers you have. So let's go ahead and start our first one. So when you click on mount management, um, you have an option here to create a remote mount. Um, you also have two tabs up on the top. One is for cloud services and one is for remote devices. That's the one we'll be using when we set up the Unraid server. But for now, let's go into the cloud service. So what we're going to do here is click on Create Remote Mount. Um, here we're going to create a file cloud gateway. And here we're going to pick the services that we have. Now this works with a ton of services, so you're going to have to actually pick out the ones you want. For simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and use OneDrive because that um, works very well. And the first thing you're going to need to do uh, is to sign in and authorize, which I've already done. But you need to go ahead and authorize your OneDrive to uh, give access to this app. Once you're done with that, you'll be prompted to go to this screen. And, and we're going to do a little bit of configuration here. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually pick what folders we want. We can go to all folders or we can pick a single folder that we want to actually use as our sync folder. Um, when you click on browse, it'll give you, a, it'll actually log in and show you a list of your folders. And this is sort of a, a dummy account here. But I'm going to click documents just for the fun of it. And I'm going to hit apply. And so what it's going to do is it's uh, going to show me that particular folder when I browse my NAS unit. Um, the other thing I want to do is shorten this name. so. I'm just going to call it OneDrive. I'll call it Docs. OK, and then I'm going to hit Next. OK, and this at first, when you first look at this, is a little bit confusing. 
But all it really is 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 setting up how much reserve space that you want to give to the drive and how you want it allocated. So this is basically going to create a pool. Um, so you'll see when we're done that this actually creates a th like a thick volume. Um, here, the default is 100 gigs. So all it's really doing is allocating 100 gigabytes of storage on your NAS, regardless of how much storage you actually have on the cloud. So you may have a couple terabytes, but you're still only going to allocate 100 gigs on this thing. So um, we'll leave that alone. You can change it smaller, larger, whatever you want to do. Um, and then here, these sliders are really to um, show you how to allocate both the read and the write. So the purpose of this is that you know the larger the read cache, the more you can um, you'll have stored in the cache that you can actually draw upon. But if you're doing a lot of files back and forth, like a little video editing, photo editing, things like that, you might want to increase your write, write cache. That way you can have you can work with more files, larger files. So it depends on you how you want to break that up. The default is the, the you know, it reserves 10%, uh, write cache is 50%, and read cache is 40%. So we'll leave it alone, but you just know that you can change that and configure that. So from there, we'll hit create. It takes a couple seconds here. You can see we get a volume prompt saying it's created a hybrid volume. And then here's a, a summary of what we got going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So if we click over and take a look at the um, storage manager, and if we take a look at storage snapshots, you can see here that it's created a thick stored space. So we have hybrid mount that's been created at 100 gigs. So the more of these connections that you make, you'll get um, additional um, hybrid mounts. So you'll get, you'll see hybrid mount two if you created a secondary service and so on. Um, now you don't create a hybrid mount for local servers, only for cloud-based servers. Okay, so once we've created our cloud servers, you can now see a summary of this and you can see the OneDrive, it's been mounted. Um, you can see that, um, how much space has uh, been used, allocated, so on and so forth. You do have some settings here, again, to, client, to adjust the cache if you want. And here you have some other options. I can um, do a speed test, I can change the cache priority, I can edit the entire share, change permissions, do all that kind of stuff. By default, when it creates the share, um, it creates it for the admin, connect, uh, admin only. So if I want other people to share this, I need to actually change that and actually go in here and say add an account. So I'm not going to do that now, but that, that's what you need to do if you want to give um, yourself or you know, secondary users a access to that folder. So I hope that makes sense. So what we've seen here is we've created a 100 gig folder. It's been set up to do some write and read caching. And it's basically going to take that information and sync it to the cloud. So I'm going to actually log in and to my cloud service. And we're going to copy back files back and forth so that you can kind of see exactly what happens. So if I go ahead and browse my network uh, and I take a look at what I'm seeing on my NAS unit, you can now see that I have the folder that was created in the hybrid mount now appears as one of my regular shared folders. So if I double click on this, I can now see the contents of what's in that shared folder. Now, obviously it's going to, I'm already logged in, but if you're, if it's the first time you're accessing, it's going to ask you for username and password or credentials. But this is effectively seeing what I have on my um, cloud service. So if I wanted to actually add to this, um, we can actually copy files either through the browser, through a phone app, through any other kind of app, and it will appear here um, just as it would if I copied it directly. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to go ahead. So I went ahead and logged into my OneDrive account just to give you an idea that it's exactly the same files as folder that we were just taking a look at. So if I look at the folder, I'm seeing exactly the same file as that's available on my OneDrive. So if I was to actually upload some files to this thing, um, let's go ahead and copy the files from my network folder and we'll see that they actually appear here. 
So I'm going to copy some text files over. So I've copied four files here. So now let's break over to the cloud service and we should see the same file. And there we go. We have the same files that have been copied here just a few seconds ago. So as you can see, the it becomes kind of invisible for, for me to copy data from my cloud service, um, whether that's um, OneDrive or Google Drive, Dropbox, Wasabi, whatever you're using, and to copy that back and forth from this folder um, without having to resort to logging into my browser and doing an upload or anything like that, or even the uh, if I'm using a local desktop app, I still have to wait for all the data to be copied over. This is virtually instantaneous. So if I'm copying 10 gigs or 20 gigs or whatever I'm copying, it'll be copied over instantly and then basically upload, download, or synchronize in the background. So that's kind of an overview of the cloud service. So now let's take a look at what it would take to actually attach a um, Unraid server to it. So what I'm going to do is go over to remote devices and I'm going to say create a remote mount. And here I'm going to create a network drive mount. So I'm going to wait till it loads here. And up here, I'm going to type in the IP address, Unraid server. And I'm going to go ahead and type in the account number or account password and account username. And I'm going to browse. And I'm going to just pick that folder for now because that's all I want to mess with and click OK. So now this gives me a summary of everything. And again, I'm going to basically edit this just to keep the folder names as short as possible. So I've got everything configured. I'm going to click on create. Here again, it gives me a summary of all the mounts that I have. And I'm going to hit close. So now what I see here is under remote devices, I see the Unraid test. And under cloud services, I see my OneDrive. And this basically gives me I start building my collection. And again, if you look at my licensing, let's go back to overview. I've only used one of the license and that's for my OneDrive. Um, I still have one available. I can create as many remote servers as I want or remote devices as I want. So if I want to attach to another NAS, to a shared folder in a PC, uh, Unraid, whatever it is that you're doing, gives you that flexibility to do that. So now that I've set it up, you can see the contents of my Unraid folders when I browse my QNAP, which, uh, and it basically allows me to see everything at once. So I can see my OneDrive folder or folders. I can see my QNAP folders. I can see my Unraid all under the same location, and I can transfer data between them. I can copy to and from um, all without ever having to worry about the individual services. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.